Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to talk about what exactly is broken access control vulnerability and then we will see a practical demonstration on how we can find this vulnerability on web applications. But as always, before going into this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I have talked about one of the most underrated features of Burp Suit that can help you to find some really high and interesting level vulnerabilities like account takeovers, etc., then go ahead and check it out. The link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see it at the right side of the screen. And now, with that being said, let us get started. Whenever I'm trying to look for some really interesting vulnerabilities in a pen test or a bug bounty program, I would always look for broken access control. The reason is actually very simple. This vulnerability is not that easy to mitigate. The thing is that see, unlike, you know, traditional vulnerabilities like cross scripting or SQL injection, where it happens because of the application is not sanitizing the user input properly, broken access control is something different. It happens because of the misconfiguration in the application's logic itself or the way the application is designed. And this is the reason why this particular vulnerability is one of my favorite to look for in a pen test or a bug bounty program. Now you might be thinking that, okay, we've, we've understood that it is like an interesting vulnerability, but what exactly is this broken access control, right? And to understand this, let's take a very simple example. And first let us try to break the term broken access and control and try to understand this in a depth. Okay, for that, I'm going to take a very simple example. Suppose we have a web application designed for a university where a teacher can mark attendance of the students. The teacher can host exams, you know, or let's say test. They can upload test book. They can upload assignments, question, etc. to the students. Whereas this same application for student is a bit different. The student can log in using their, you know, let's say enrollment ID and password, and then they will be able to upload the assignment, whatever assignment the teacher has been given to them. They're going to upload their work and the teacher can review it. The student can download the eBooks that have been uploaded by the, you can say the faculties, right? So for student, the application is behaving a bit different. And for teacher, the application is different, right? Therefore, in this example, you can clearly understand that the teacher here is a high level privilege user because this teacher have a lot more functionalities on this particular application compared to student, right? Whereas the student here is a low privilege one. The reason is simple because the student is only allowed to execute things that the teacher has assigned. Like if the teacher has uploaded a, a book, then he can download that book or they can download that book. If the teacher has hosted a test or exam, then they can just give the exam. If there is nothing like that, if the teacher has not done anything, then they won't be able to do anything on to that particular application, right? So teacher is the highest level of user in this particular application. Now, ideally, this is what you call a specific role and access. For example, for teacher, the role and access is simple, right? They have the access to host and test exams, upload eBooks, mark attendance, etc. For student, they have the access to download the eBooks uploaded by the, uh, uploaded by the faculties, give the exams or tests hosted by that particular faculties, right? And etc. Now here, actually the thing, the main important thing happens, right? If you understand the term broken access control, it simply means that the access control set by the application is broken, which means that imagine in the same situation, what will happen if a student is able to, for example, let's say mark other students attendance, right? So this is what broken access control means. If the student is able to do so, if the student is able to, you know, let's say uh, host exams, you know, upload eBooks or, you know, mark attendance, upload at assignments, etc., then it will be considered as a broken access control misconfiguration because ideally the student should be only allowed to just, you know, access whatever the functionality has been given by by the application in in the default settings right so this is what you call a broken access control issue you might think that the impact is actually low in this case but if we consider some bigger application this same vulnerability can be of a huge impact for example let's say that you know what if a normal user in amazon can delete the listed products on amazon which is supposed to be done by their employees only by the Amazon's employee only. What if a normal user in Amazon can change the price of any product because of a broken access control misconfiguration? You see, 
the impact is actually very high depending on what access we've got as a low level user, right? So in all this example, you can see many application in real world in, in real world scenarios where we have applications that have multiple level of user. If the low privilege user is able to somehow execute a functionality or, you know, do something that should be only done by a high privilege user, then this is what we call a broken access control issue. I hope you all have understood this. And now I think we're ready to proceed with a practical demonstration to understand this with more clarity. So let's go right into that. So now let us go ahead and try to understand that how we can find broken access control vulnerabilities through a practical demonstration. Okay. Now, just to give you guys a context, we can find broken access control through a lot of ways. So the most common ways is, you know, using IDOS or maybe finding some misconfiguration in, in the way the hand, the application is handling the sensitive endpoints or privileged endpoints. Okay. So let's try to go ahead and see for, with a simple example. So I have created this very simple lab over here. Let me just go into it a second and let me go to login. Okay. You can see we have a login panel here, right? And once you see that when I'm going to type the username and password inside this, you know, panel like admin and the password is admin. You see that we have been redirected to a secret page. And if you take a very closer look here, it disclose a sensitive thing, right? SSH admin and password, right? Now, it is important to note that this particular endpoint is behind an authentication. Like if I copy this and open it in a new tab, you see that it will redirect us back to the login page. Let me just continue to this site and you see it has redirected us back to the login page. Let me show it to you again. Okay. And it's only going to show us the data if we are logged in as an admin user. Right. So if for somehow we are able to access this particular secret page without authenticating to the endpoint with the valid credential, it will be considered as a broken access control vulnerability. Right. So what actually happens in, you know, some application and especially application that are designed in, you know, uh, .NET or, you know, PHP, what that happens is that, you know, sometimes if it is not configured, you can append the endpoint which you want to access, like the endpoint behind a barrier with the endpoint, which is accessible by you. What I'm trying to say is in this example, we are not authenticated, right? But we can still access the login endpoint. So always try to do something like this, login slash and the endpoint that you want to access. If the application is not properly configured, this will allow you to see the content of secret. I have found this vulnerability a lot of times in my private pen test engagements. And most often I find this in, you know, .NET, .NET based application. Okay, so let's hit enter and let's see what happens. And you can clearly see that we are able to see the secret content along with the login page that was supposed to be, you know, uh, uh, given to us, right, as a non-authenticated user, right? So this is one of the example of how broken access control vulnerability looks, right? You can obviously go ahead and try to find this vulnerability on many applications. And I will recommend you to find this on .NET based application because this is where I have got a lot of success with this simple trick, right? So I hope you all have understood this. If you have any doubts, if you have any issues in at any point of, you know, understanding broken access control or is this particular demonstration, then do let me know. We'll be planning to add more broken access control related vulnerabilities. Since this is the first video, this is, you know, a simple demonstration of how, you know, we can find broken access controls. But definitely in upcoming videos, we'll be diving deep into this particular section of the vulnerability, right? But as always, if you haven't checked out, again, if you have any doubts or if you have any issues, feel free to let me know your doubts or issues through the comment section. Also, do join our Telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going into cybersecurity and ethical hacking. And with that being said, keep learning, keep hacking, and thank you so much for watching this video.